Major trauma is serious or multiple injuries that could result in death or serious disability. It is usually caused by accidents or violence. 10,000 people die as a result of trauma-related injuries in England and Wales every year. Trauma-related injury is the leading cause of death in children and adults aged below 44 years. Major trauma is relatively rare and evidence shows that trauma is best treated by specialists who regularly treat major trauma patients. In each region, the trauma network is set up with a major trauma centre at its centre surrounded by district general hospitals that will continue to provide care in their emergency departments for the vast majority of patients who have not received major injuries. By providing better organised trauma care, the NHS estimates that it can save around 450 to 600 lives a year. Royal Preston Hospital is the major trauma centre at the heart of the Lancashire and South Cumbria Major Trauma Network. Following joint working in consultation with our neighbouring trusts, it was clear that the Royal Preston was probably the first choice for a major trauma centre. It was therefore agreed to establish it here with trauma units feeding in. These were for several reasons. Firstly, we have a good capacity, high quality emergency department already here. We also provide regional services such as neurosurgery and plastics, which are often essential to major trauma patients. In addition, we provide rehabilitation and mobility services across the region, which are essential in the recovery of patients following major trauma. We're also geographically well-placed with good motorway access from with across the region. More recently, we've worked with our colleagues in Northwest Air Ambulance to establish their aircraft here at the Royal Preston. The advantage is that in certain major trauma call-outs, one of our senior clinicians can be taken on the aircraft to the patient directly on site. This allows decisions to be made in terms of care immediately and also advice to be given back here to the colleagues in the hospital where the patient's received. In cases of major trauma, minutes can make a difference in terms of survival and recovery and this is a great advantage. The first stage in the patient pathway is the 999 call being put through to alert the emergency services. The Northwest Ambulance Service have dedicated staff who will take that initial call, determine the exact location, take call details and make sure the appropriate resource is sent. Once on scene, the attendees will initially assess the patient and once established the patient does have major trauma injuries, may well decide to take the patient direct to the major trauma centre at Royal Preston Hospital. As the patient's en route to the hospital, the control centre staff will pre-alert the hospital so the major trauma team can be alerted and be there ready to receive the patient. The trauma call is to inform uh, very senior clinicians in each of the core specialties of a trauma case coming in and they all carry a white bleep in the hospital and will come down to the emergency department and prepare the resuscitation bay for the arrival of the patient. As the patient arrives in the resuscitation room, we take a handover from the ambulance service in front of the whole trauma team so that everybody is aware of the mechanism of injury and the uh, types of injuries that the ambulance service have identified. However, we do then do a very uh, rapid assessment of the patient to identify any immediate life-threatening injuries. Each person in the team is allocated one specific area, for example the airway, the breathing, the circulation, and will do a rapid assessment of that area in order to again identify problems that could uh, cause the patient to die imminently. For example, very severe head injuries, internal bleeding, uh, punctured lungs, that kind of thing. As each uh, person does that assessment, they communicate that information back to the team leader who takes an overview of the patient's management and decides on how to prioritise each person's interventions in uh, managing that patient. Having identified those life-threatening injuries, we then move into a treatment phase where we will deal with those injuries, maybe by putting a tube into the chest, anaesthetizing the patient, setting up drips, uh, infusing blood and fluids, and basically trying to stabilize the patient. Uh, and then we can move on to the investigations such as uh, x-rays and blood tests. The advantage of having very senior clinicians involved in the trauma team is that they take, each take 
a particular area of the patient can make a very thorough assessment and using their experience uh, communicate that information back to the team leader who can then prioritize and decide on the treatment plan uh, and in particular uh, which uh, procedure, which treatment is done in which order, which can be really crucial uh, for some patients. Just about every patient who has major trauma will undergo a CT scan. In some people who purely have trauma to the head, for example, then it's a CT scan confined to the head. But in the majority of people, it's a scan of most of the body. And we try and do this as soon as possible after the injury has been sustained. The CT scanner is a very exciting piece of technology and it's developed rapidly over the last 10 years. And now every department in the country has at least one, usually two or more. And the way it works is it uses a rotating beam of x-rays to make very detailed x-ray pictures of the patient. So you can look within the abdominal cavity, within the chest and within the brain, and also at the various bones that are often difficult to see, for example, the spine and the pelvis. Only takes a few minutes. This is one of the advantages of a modern CT. The entire body can be scanned in under a couple of minutes. It takes a few minutes more to process the images after that. But when the images are processed, what they tell us is in incredible detail what injuries have been sustained within the patient's body cavities. And this is important because in major trauma, it's not the obvious injury that will kill you. It's the unsuspected injury. And having a CT at an early stage removes this uncertainty. When a patient's had their diagnostic tests, so their CT scans, the x-rays and the blood results um, have all come back, then we need to sit down as a team to work out the treatment plan for a patient. We obviously need to look at the images, um, look at the blood results to determine what we're going to do next, and able to formulate um, a comprehensive treatment plan. And this really depends on exactly what the injuries that the patient has. And the things that we're looking at is, do they have a major injury that needs to go to theatre straight away? Um, are they well enough? to go to the ward or do they need to go to critical care? Um, if they don't need an operation straight away, do they need any other kind of procedures doing so? For example, do they need to have a chest drain put in? Do they need to have a plaster cast put on a leg? Or do we need to give them a blood transfusion? It could just be something as simple as that. And it's really a team decision as to what happens next and the best place for the patient to go once they leave resus. So major trauma surgery is similar to other kinds of surgery uh, insofar as what we're actually doing. Uh, the kind of operations we're performing. It's different in that uh, in terms of the major trauma patient, surgery is often being performed under emergent situations which are being performed to save life. And in my case as an orthopaedic surgeon, situations in which we're trying to emergently save limbs. Patients that come to critical care will have a variety of injuries. There'll be severely injured patients who are unconscious, often from severe uh, head injuries, thoracic trauma. But the patients with abdominal trauma as well have had a prolonged period in theatre and who require a period of post-operative ventilation. We also have other patients who are not as unwell but have been identified as high risk of deterioration and we'll need to offer a period of closer monitoring to try and pick up any complications early and deal with them appropriately. Once the patient's uh, level of dependency is such that it's considered safe and appropriate to move them to a ward environment, We'll be liaising closely with the referring medical teams and nursing staff on the wards to make sure that we can step down their care. Patients can receive their rehabilitation at a variety of different stages. It needs to start early to try and get people mobilised and prevent complications developing. We link in very closely to outpatient therapy services and also a number of community rehabilitation teams which are based across Lancashire and South Cumbria. Brain and spinal cord injuries can uh, affect uh, many aspects of, of a person. So part of the specialist rehabilitation approach is to look at the whole uh, impact of the injury on, on the person. The sort of injuries that might involve a rehabilitation physician like myself within, within trauma will be patients who have suffered amputations or spinal injuries, traumatic brain injuries or multiple limb injuries. And I will go and see the patient and assess their likely rehabilitation needs so we can preempt the rehabilitation program before it's actually required. The rehabilitation goals is to get the patient back to their, in, to their independent living and to their activities which they enjoyed prior to the accident. Psychological therapy can help patients develop strategies to improve their mental processing and also to improve retrieval and memory skills which have been compromised by the trauma and the specific injury. Mm -hmm.